Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. We will uh, talk about uh, biological responses. In the previous class also I talked about biological responses. We will spend some more time on the biological responses because uh, as soon as a foreign body whether it is a metal or whether it is a polymer or a ceramic placed uh, inside the system short duration, long duration immediately the defense mechanism starts acting and um, this defense mechanism uh, may involve antibodies, coagulation factors, inflammatory factors, um, the uh, formation of uh, encapsulation of the biomaterial, so many things can start happening actually. Um, some of them are felt only when the material is placed for a very long period and some of them are felt immediately as soon as the material is placed uh, within a short duration. So, we are going to spend uh, some more time on this because um, this information is very important uh, so that to be very sure that the material does not cause uh, cytotoxicity uh, or any other problems to the um, host. And uh, before going into a human, these materials are always tested in animal and uh, they perform all these tests to identify all these issues. Okay, so, what happens? So, what are the various responses that happen inside um, the coagulation? So, many factors related to the blood coagulating factors come into picture here. Okay. Then um, the complement, there is a set of proteins uh, which help uh, in trying to um, attack the material. This is the host defense system. Okay. So, uh, there are some complement proteins which tries to identify this uh, foreign object and there are some complement proteins which tries to attack them. So, so, all those things will happen. Then inflammation starts happening, uh, the inflammation mostly um, around the site of implant. Inflammation um, is uh, good because it helps uh, the host systems to adjust as well as attack uh, the foreign body and then uh, you also end up having capsule formation. So, the formation of uh, um, giant cells, multinucleated cells, all those things uh, start happening actually. So, these are the various responses that happen as I said some of them start happening very fast within a few hours and some of them start happening within a few days and so on. So, ultimately the goal is to achieve uh, biocompatibility of the material and uh, try to address the cytotoxicity or genotoxicity of the material. So, the material has to be both biocompatible and it should not cause adverse reaction. So, that means it should not be cytotoxic. So, um, in order to un understand this, um, I thought we need to spend some time on uh, the various biological responses of the biomaterial to the system. Okay. So, we will spend some of them and I did introduce some of these topics in the previous uh, lecture as well. Okay, so, there is sequence of events that happen as soon as the biomaterial is implanted into the system. So, um, the place where it is implanted is considered as a site of injury. So, there could be a blood material interaction, if it is a if it is a cardiovascular stent um, or if it is a diaphragm valve there is going to be a blood material interaction. Okay. Whereas, uh, if it is an ureteral region of course, uh, this is not going to be happening. Then there is a provisional matrix formation. Okay. So, if there is a blood uh, material interaction there could be coagulation things start happening. Okay. There could be uh, other um, things like complement activation could be happening. Then you have the acute inflammation that is at the site, then um, it leads to chronic inflammation, okay. then uh, formation of granulation tissue, foreign body interaction and finally, the material could be completely encapsulated that is fibrous capsule development could happening. So, there could be inflammatory um, activation and uh, there could be immunological activation. So, you could have immunological things happening immediately, then inflammatory actions happening and then again immunological um, activities happening later actually. 
and that is how the um, the system, the human system or, or the host system starts responding to this biomaterial. Okay, so, we need to understand this and whether this leads to complications to this host needs to be also uh, recorded. Um, so, these are related to the tissues, so inflammatory wound healing responses. So, it is like a, an external injury, a wound, so there could be several sets of responses which are called wound healing responses and there is a foreign body interactions okay, because uh, you, have, you have placed a material which is a foreign body and then finally, fibrous encapsulation. So, um, when a biomaterial is placed after a few months or few years, it will be completely encapsulated by the uh, tissues and it may be uh, impossible to remove the material from the uh, host at all because it is completely encapsulated. So, if uh, somebody wants to remove, especially if there are uh, certain joint failures um, okay, and then they want to replace it and place a new joint, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the surgeons find it very difficult because the material is completely encapsulated. Even if you take cardiovascular stents, it may get encapsulated by tissues. Um, so, it may be very difficult to remove that uh, old uh, stent and try to place another new stent. That is why there is now a lot of uh, interest in looking at biodegradable stents, so that the stent will completely go away. So, if the, if the um, cardio, cardiac surgeon wants to place another stent in the vicinity, uh, he or she will not have any problem. Okay? Now, let us look at each one of them little bit more in detail. So, there could be four types of tissue responses here, because there could be different types of material that is coming into the human system. Toxicity of the material, the material is very toxic. Okay? Um, that means, uh, the material itself may be toxic or there could be some lichens that could be toxic. There could be some acids getting leached, lactic acids um, or acrylic acids or uh, some other uh, um, maybe silver nanoparticles. All this could be very toxic uh, the, because the local concentration gradients. So, there could be death, cell death. So, this uh, we can even uh, look at it in vitro. Um, for example, I talked uh, a couple of classes back an assay called MTT assay, where we can look at uh, the um, viability of cells. That means, how many percentage of cells that are viable with respect to control. Um, so, we can incubate uh, the biomaterial uh, with the, the cells like L6 or 3T3, which are uh, mostly muscle related cells and then um, after 24 hours we can count and see what is the percentage of cells that are live. So, that is called an MTT um, where we are using a reagent MTT or uh, uh, we can look at uh, cytotoxicity and so on actually. There are so many ways uh, to determine uh, whether the cells are dying uh, whether the cells are dying naturally. When the cells die naturally we call it apoptosis When the cells die because of uh, a foreign material. Um, then it is called necrosis. So, we can monitor whether the death is um, apoptosis or necrosis. If the cells die in because of necrosis, the cell membrane is damaged. So, the material inside, the enzymes inside are leaked out. So, we can find out what is the um, um, enzyme that is coming out. For example, um, LDH type of enzymes okay? The, okay, which gets leaked out when there is necrosis. So, this can be easily studied uh, through in vitro, we can look at different cell um, which are related to the human system okay, and then find out the toxicity of the material. If you have non-toxic nearly inert materials, okay, for example, PTFE, originally if you look at a biomaterial history, um, the second generation it was felt um, can we have inert material as biomaterial, PTFE. PVC, they are ex extremely inert. Okay. Uh, so, what happens? Formation of fibrous tissues with variable thickness. So, you are going to have the entire material encapsulated by fibrous tissue, tissues. Fi this is called fibrous capsules around, and uh, this could be soft and hard tissues. That was in the second generation uh, biomaterials, it was always felt that the biomaterial should be completely inert. Okay. Um, PTFE is supposed to be very good, titanium is supposed to be very good. Um, so, small diameter vascular grafts completely inert. Okay? Uh, so, such materials are 
uh, non-toxic. So, there is formation of fibrous tissues as you can see here um, it could be a thin fibrous uh, soft tissues or hard tissues or thick and uh, it completely encapsulates your material. Now, non-toxic bioactive material that means the material is active, uh, it is not inert. So, there could be um, formation of interficial bonds uh, between the tissues and the biomaterial. Okay. So, it is not completely engulfing or encapsulating your uh, um, biomaterial, but it is forming interficial bonds. It is very difficult later on to remove um, if there is a fibrous encapsulation or even when it is form an interficial bonds because the material is completely become part of uh, the uh, host system. Fourth type non-toxic dissolving for example, it could be a biodegrading material or a bioabsorbing material. Um, so, what happens after some time maybe a year uh, two years the material is completely um, disappearing dissolving like your PLA okay, or uh, some PLGA um, and so on. So, what happens that area is getting replaced by the surrounding tissue. So, the tissues start growing as if the material is not there, the material has completely gone. Um, ideally, um, it could be a, a used in tissue engineering. So, I am growing tissues with some polymers which are bioresorbable, then you are placing it inside and uh, um, the tissue grows, material disappears. Maybe one day we will have a um, industry, uh, the um, cardiovascular stents which is completely bioresorbed. So, uh, the cardiovascular stent may completely disappear unlike the current stents which are made of nickel titanium. So, four types of situations uh, toxic uh, biomaterial or leaching leachens from the material that will kill lead to cell death, non toxic nearly inert. So, there could be fibrous encapsulation or non toxic bioactive there could be formation of interfacial bond non-toxic dissolving material. Um, so, it is replacement by surrounding material, but here um, we may say non-toxic dissolving there could be some toxic dissolving material also. For example, polylactic acid um, it is dissolving or it is bioresorbing, but the lactic acid that is produced is little bit toxic. So, there could be some cells dying um, in the vicinity, there could be little bit uh, local toxicity because of the local acidity. So, there could be some variations here uh, toxic dissolving material. Okay. So, um, we have different uh, situations and the tissue responds in different ways that is the beauty of uh, our defense system uh, which takes which looks at uh, coagulation which looks at complement activation um, mainly to attack uh, the foreign material uh, leads to inflammation um, the chronic and acute inflammation, then it leads to fibrous formation, encapsulation, giant fib um, cell formation all those things happen and uh, you need to know that uh, such things can happen uh, that is very very important for us to understand. Let us look at uh, each one of them little bit in detail. So, biocompatibility as I mentioned the ability to provide an appropriate host biological response in a specific given application in the body. So, specific application. So, we have different applications like uh, we have been talking about um, it could be short duration, long duration, permanent stay, it could be in blood contacting, non blood contacting, urinary region, um, it could be a inert biomaterial, it could be an active biomaterial, it could be a bioresorbable material, it could be a metallic which does not re. So, given a pro application, so it should have appropriate host response. Okay the material should not create any adverse biological reaction. We do not want the material uh, to lead to systemic toxicity or uh, acute toxicity okay, genotoxicity um, or um, metal leaching which could be um, problems to the host okay, creating uh, um, certain side effects. So, it could cause allergy uh, metal leachants can be allergic to the pollution or lactic acid leaching out could be allergic acrylic acid leaching, leaching out uh, may be from uh, dental implants could be allergic, cytotoxicity, um, cell culture cytotoxicity that means uh, toxicity of the material to the cells um, especially the addition of the cells to the surface proliferation activation and death. So, you want the cells to adhere proliferate 
get activated and finally, it should go through the apoptosis not through necrosis. So, the biomaterial should add, uh, should be uh, compatible um, as well as not create cytotoxicity. Okay. Um, so, look, look at the biological responses. Let us go a little bit in more detail. So, adsorption of blood proteins is happening here. If it is a blood contacting device, um, then uh, we have activation of the coagulation ca cascade. This is a fantastic cascade. So, there are many uh, coagulation factors one after another after another keep on happening and finally, you are going to have uh, the coagulation. Uh, and then you are activating the complement. These are set of proteins which get activated um, so that uh, they are the host defense mechanism. Activation of the platelets. Okay. So, all these things hap happen actually. Then we are having activation of polymorphonuclear leukocytes, monocytes and then macrophages. Okay. These are macrophages are uh, um, certain cells which try to form um, the um, encapsulating of the biomaterial. Then danger signals that is called alarm, alarmins released from the damaged tissue okay. that is the next step. Immune cells show enhanced function via pattern recognition receptor. So, they are able to identify that uh, the, uh, the material has certain pattern. Um, so, there are some factors getting released. Okay. All these are called immune response, okay. activation of uh, uh, coagulation, activation of complement, um, activation of platelet, then it is activating the polymorphonuclear leukocytes, okay, macrophages which is involved in the um, engulfing uh, or the encapsulation of the biomaterial, then signals are produced and then uh, all these immune cells show enhanced activity. Then comes the inflammatory things, uh, you are going to have acute inflammatory response, activation of monocytes and macrophages, okay. activation of monocytes and macrophages, then chronic inflammation um, happens up after the acute and then uh, you are getting foreign body giant cells fibroblast activation. And finally, macrophage derived cytokines and pattern recognition receptors, engagement activate dendrite cells, all these start accumulating on the biomaterial. So, again immune response takes place. So, we have the immune response to start with, okay, then we have the inflammation uh, which is acute and chronic happening and then we have again the immune response foreign body, um, giant cells forming, fibroblast activation, macrophage derived cytokines, all these things start happening. Okay as the uh, material um, is placed inside the system. This is uh, the time of events uh, could be several several hours here. Okay, so, uh, let us look a little bit uh, in more detail each one of these items. Uh, so, we are going to have two things happening when the material is in contact with the blood, the complement and the coagulation. So, what is this complement? This is a system of plasma proteins that is activated by the presence of pathogens um, antibody mediated bactericidal activity. Okay. So, uh, these are formed when there are any pathogens, these are formed when there are any foreign bodies, okay. um, they get activated and there are 30 distinct plasma and membrane bound proteins. These proteins are found in plasma, these proteins are found in membrane. So, what is their act, act, job? Um, they uh, try to identify these pathogens, they try to identify these bacteria, they try to identify this foreign body, so that uh, they can be attacked by the, uh, the host uh, um, immune system. Okay. So, there are 30 proteins here, that is what is this complement means. Okay. Uh, then next one is the coagulation, Blood, this is a series of calcium dependent proenzyme to serine protease conversion localized on the surface of the activated cells. This is in vivo it happened. Uh, what happens? Finally, there is a formation of thrombin. Thrombin is an enzyme which converts fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin is a insoluble blood clot. So, um, when there is a wound of blood comes out after some time uh, it starts clotting right that is called fibrin. How does it form? It forms from fibrinogen into fibrin. This conversion happens because of this enzyme called thrombin. It is an enzyme thrombin which converts fibrinogen into fibrin 
and this is what is blood clot. So, if this thrombin is not formed, blood will start oozing out, it will not clot. Ultimately, you need to form this fibrin, okay. For example, you can see this blood clot on a polymer or a biomaterial surface. So, both are very important. So, as soon as the material comes in contact with blood, um, complement system gets activated. That means, 30 um, about 30 proteins get activated which are involved uh, in identifying pathogens or bacteria um, which tells the, uh, the defense system of the host that there are some um, unwanted uh, foreign body present okay? and this is the complement. Then the blood starts coagulating. How does it happen? Uh, there are a series of actions taking place and finally, we end up uh, in the formation of an enzyme called a thrombin which converts the fibrinogen present in the blood to fibrin. Fibrin is insoluble, so it is the blood clot. So, two very important act actions take place. Okay? So, you need to understand um, as soon as the material comes in contact with the blood. Now, this com complement, there are 30 proteins involved in the complement. Each protein has different type of uh, activity. Okay? So, we will look at that later. Um, so, coagulation. So, I said uh, uh, thrombin is here which converts fibrinogen to fibrin. This is this fibrin is an insoluble. So, this is called the blood clot. Okay? This is the blood clot. So, thrombin is a protein which is doing the job of converting fibrinogen to fibrin. But look at this. Before that, there are so many factors um, which lead to the formation of thrombin which is formed from prothrombin, which is formed with the help of uh, factor x a or 10 a, 10, 9, uh, 9 a and so on. Okay? One is called the intrinsic pathway, other is called the extrinsic pathway. So, two pathways through which uh, you have uh, this particular factor 5 a happening, which catalyzes the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin and thrombin is the main enzyme which converts your fibrinogen to fibrin and which leads to the formation of stable fibrin which is in our uh, colloquial term call it blood clot. So, these are series of things happening and of course, uh, uh, formation of blood clot is very very important for the survival of the human being. If the blood does not clot, um, there could be continuous uh, oozing of blood and the person can lose blood and uh, um, end up having a shock because of shortage of blood. Okay? So, especially if uh, somebody has cardiovascular problem, they are giving, uh, given drugs like warfarin or even aspirin which helps in the um, thinning of blood. Okay? So, those people who take warfarin or even uh, aspirin have the problem of uh, the side effects. Uh, that means, uh, if they have injuries there could be a lot of uh, blood loss. So, they have to be very careful. They can even have internal bleeding because these factors are affected or these factors are retarded or inhibited by those drugs, especially um, those who are taking drugs related to cardiovascular for blood thinning. Okay? So, coagulation is very important for the survival of human being, but then when you keep uh, this type of uh, biomaterial, they also lead to some of these uh, clot formation. So, you do not want your biomaterial um, to initiate this cascade of events um, and ending up with formation of thrombin uh, which catalyzes the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Okay? So, it is fantastic uh, things, set of things happening inside the human system. Okay, um, I did talk about complement. Okay? These are the system of plasma proteins. Uh, so, they also get activated which are involved in so many um, antibody me mediated bactericidal activity. So, we will look at that complement pathway. There are again three pathways here classical pathway, lectin pathway, alternate pathway okay? and as I said there are almost uh, um, 30 distinct plasma uh, or membrane bound proteins. So, they all get activated at different uh, sequence of events and they in turn activate um, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, macrophages, so many things uh, they can activate. Once uh, um, they activate, they get activated, 
they can even kill the cells. So, this cell lysis also takes place. So, so many different types of uh, complements um, and they end up uh, killing cells here inflammatory and cell infiltration. Okay. So, we do not want the complement activation also which may lead to cell death. Okay. What are these uh, uh, so main consequences of complement activation? Opsonization of pathogens. What is this opsonization? Uh, these complements are fantastic proteins. They um, identify what are the pathogens uh, so that uh, the host defense can go and kill them, isn't it? So they are like you are uh, uh, in the war uh, special force which identifies um, who are the terrorists. Okay, so that's what it does. Opsonization of pathogens. So some of these. Um, complement proteins or job is to just identify pathogens that is one. Some of the complements recruitment of inflammatory and immunocompetent cells. So, they will start collecting um, uh, inflammatory and immunocompetent cells uh, towards the target size. They all want to go towards the place where the biomaterial is placed and third is direct killing of pathogens. They directly go and product, they will go and kill the pathogens. It could be a bacteria um, because the biomaterial is always considered as a foreign object. So, for the Im immune system they are unwanted. Okay. So, three things these complement proteins do. They identify uh, the pathogens um, or the foreign body to the host defense. So, the host defense uh, once they are identified the host defense system can go exactly and kill. So, it is like uh, uh, you know uh, the, path, uh, the special force goes and identifies who are the terrorists in, in a village and the army comes and exactly targets those people and leaving the innocent people. That is the job of complement. They recruit inflammatory and immunocompetent cells. So, they bring these cells towards uh, uh, closer to the um, foreign body. They directly kill the pathogens. Okay. So, there could be pathogens killed, so some good cells also get lysed and so on. So, all these are the main um, activities of these complement. So, once they get activated, they start doing these three different jobs. Okay. So, we do not want that to happen, um, especially when we place a biomaterial. That is why, uh, especially uh, when, a, when a patient undergoes a, a implant. Um, they try to give drugs so that the uh, immune system is slightly uh, is suppressed. We do not want the immune system to become active um, creating blood clots, um, complement activation um, and then uh, systems becomes uh, uh, inflammated and so on. So, the, they give lot of drugs um, where the immune system can get little suppressed. So, the patients um, can uh, have the risk of having uh, diseases where uh, because the immune system is compromised here. Okay. So, they can have bacterial infection, they can uh, even have uh, um, long term HIV type of infection because their immune system is suppressed. Okay. So, these are the job uh, of the complement proteins. So, one needs to keep in mind um, when the biomaterial is placed that uh, the biomaterial does not activate the complement proteins. At the same time, we do not want the biomaterial to activate the coagulation pathway because there could be a lot of blood clotting taking place as I have been exp explaining uh, formation of uh, stable fibrin which are insoluble around the biomaterial formation of clots. So, we do not want both these things happening uh, when the biomaterial uh, is placed inside the blood clot acting area. Okay. Uh, okay. So, these are many complement proteins, okay. these C3, C4 as I said there are 30 different uh, plasma bound or membrane bound proteins which are called complement. These proteins C3 and C4 uh, identification that is opsonization of pathogens. C3A, C5A they are recruitment activation of inflammatory cells. C5B9 lysis of pathogens cytotoxicity, C5B9. So, you are looking at cell lysis, um, C3, C4. Um, are involved in identifying um, the pathogens, 
um, C 3 A, C 5 A are involved in the recruitment of inflammatory cells sorry uh, C 3 A, C 3 B recruitment of inflammatory cells, um, clearing immune complexes in apoptotic cells. So, once the cells have died you need to remove this that is C 1 Q um, and so on okay, C 1 Q uh, and then augment cellular immune responses again bring back um, the cellular response with the help of T and B cells. So, C 3, C 4. Uh, okay. So, these are the jobs of these uh, complement proteins, very interesting uh, such fantastic things are happening inside the host system. So, I think it is very fascinating uh, the complement system it uh, identifies the pathogens, it brings the inflammatory and immune uh, competent cells, it directly kills the um, pathogens. So, all these three things are done by the um, complement system. Okay. So, complement activation, okay, how does it happen? So, we can uh, or how can we prevent this complement activation? So, we can have modification of device, device materials or the blood contacting materials. Um, people have looked at heparin coating, heparin um, by coating this heparin it will prevent uh, both complement activation as well as it can uh, um, reduce the coagulation of the bread blood. Okay. So, this can limit complement activation and subsequent inflammatory response. So, that is modification of the devices heparin coating. So, there is a lot of interest nowadays on heparin coating. There are some polymeric material which are moderately activating the complement based on cellulose like cellulose acetate, hemophane, cellulose triacetate all these uh, biomaterials moderately activate the complement system. There are some biomaterials which very low activating polymethyl metacrylate, polysulfones, polyacrylonitrile that is why polymethyl metacrylate is widely used um, uh, in the oral or dental polysulfones are also used in some of the guide wires, guide tubes okay, uh, because polyacrylonitrile also. Um, are very useful because none of them activate um, the complement system. They are all synthetic material. So, one needs to keep that in mind and um, if one is designing biomaterial where blood con contacting biomaterial and we do not want the complement activation. So, one is modifying the surface and heparin is widely nowadays used um, which can prevent both uh, uh, the coagulation as well as complement or we can think of using uh, this type of uh, um, natural material which moderately activate or uh, these type of synthetic material uh, which does not activate uh, the uh, complement system. Okay. So, we will continue more on these um, uh, biological responses in the next class also. Thank you very much for your time.